Okay, let's play some damn chess. God, God fucking, fucking damn, damn it. <laughs> Street war. God damn right. You, you suck, suck my, my dick, dick bitch. bitch. Come on, you slut that slut. In China? You, you suck, suck my, my dick, dick bitch. bitch. I'm gonna eat you up, you bitch. I'm gonna ask you up. I'm gonna know I'm gonna dick you up, you slut. Dude, I got one that one of those fucking bitch shit. I didn't say this was a bitch shit. You stupid motherfucker. Thank you, your goddamn ass. ass. I was a stupid motherfucker, but you're stupid. Are you fucking stupid for this one? You suck, bitch. Oh, you suck, bitch. Oh, you suck, my 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 bitch. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> He's trying to jet edge Uzi RMP. You suck my dick, bitch. Jen Ed's Uzi. Jen Ed's Uzi. Jen Ed's Uzi. Jen Ed's Uzi. Now fuck the movie tone on here. If I can arm yourself a fucking man. So I can arm up the fuck out of your black ass. There's a guy by the name of Jefferson Bethke who just put out a poem called uh, I Hate Religion, But I Love Jesus. And uh, it's getting quite popular. It has uh, over 600,000 views as of the making of this video. If I haven't uploaded this video, it'll probably have over a million. And uh, it seems like everyone likes it. Seems like it's pretty fucking popular. Everyone's like, yeah! Fuck me, yeah! Woo! But yay, Jesus! So, um... Let's hear what he has to say. What if I told you Jesus can do a religion? I would have to say that that doesn't seem very accurate. I mean, let's be real here. If Jesus was as the Bible described him, then he was constantly preaching in front of thousands of people. And he wasn't just preaching a philosophy, he was preaching that he himself was divine. That, that he was, was the, the son of God, God that, that through him, him God worked miracles. Not, Not only did he, he preach to thousands of people, but he had an entourage of 12 men who had given, given up all of their worldly possessions to follow him around and obey his edicts. I mean, I mean let's, let's just put it in perspective. perspective. Let's, let's say that, that I did that. that. Let's, let's say I got, got on, on my YouTube, YouTube channel tomorrow and said, hey guys, I know, I know I've been calling, calling myself the amazing atheist, atheist but, but actually I'm not an atheist, atheist anymore. It turns, it turns out, out that I'm, I'm the son of God, God. <coughs> and you should follow me. Uh, everything I say is no longer just the opinions of a piddling little man, but the opinions of an all-knowing being. So you better listen to me. That is religion. So right, so right out of the gate, gate I'm, not I'm not buying the premise, the premise. but we'll give, we'll give the rest, the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, if what if I told you voting, voting Republican really wasn't, wasn't his mission? mission. What, what if, if I told you Republican doesn't, doesn't automatically mean Christian? Mean yeah, uh, well, well, I, I buy that, that because Jesus didn't know what a fucking Republican, Republican or a Democrat was. He was living in an entirely different time with entirely different politics. There, there were, were no, no political, political parties, parties. People, people were still ruled by kings. kings. So, of course, Jesus wasn't trying to get you to vote Republican. Republican. The very concept of voting was probably foreign to him. I mean, I mean if religion is so great, great why has it started, started so many wars? Why does, why does it, it build huge churches, but fails to feed the poor? Yes, yes that's, that's true. true. Religion has started a lot of wars, and they do build opulent palaces of gold while people are starving in the streets. So those, so those are fair criticisms, criticisms of religion. So I, guess I guess my question at this point in the poem is, what exactly is the difference between Jesus and religion? That's, That's the whole premise of the poem, is that religion is one thing, 
Jesus, Jesus is something else. else. So, so where do you back, back that? that? Let me clarify. I, I love the church, church. I, I love the Bible, Bible and yes, yes I, I believe in sin. <sighs> Let me get this, this shit straight. <sighs> church, I love the Bible and yes, I believe in sin. <sighs> Let me get this shit straight. God damn it. You love, love the church! church. I, I love the church. You believe in the Bible! I love the Bible. You believe in sin! Yes, I believe in sin. You believe that, that Jesus is the Son of God and only through Him can we be saved. But the Son of God never supports self-righteousness, not now, not then. Which means I don't have to hide my failure, I don't have to hide my sin. Because it doesn't depend on me, it depends on Him. But what you don't believe in is religion. Well, well, forgive, forgive me, me, sir, but, but what the fuck have you subtracted from religion? religion? If, if you're still gonna you buy into the church and the Bible you and the notion you of Jesus' as divinity and the notion that you can only be saved through him, him then what have you given up? up? What, what have you subtracted from that equation to change it from religion to Jesus? Religion minus you what equals Jesus? You stupid Fill in the fucking blank for me, sir. Because I'm, I'm not seeing it. I don't understand. And, and by, by the way, way what the fuck is sin exactly? I'm a little, I'm a little confused. Sin is when you break God's rules. The rules outlined in the Bible which you believe in. So, you have to accept Jesus in order to not be punished for breaking the rules that were made by God, who is Jesus. Now back, now back to the point, point, one thing is vital to mention. How Jesus, Jesus and religion are on opposite spectrums. Ah, oh, alright, finally. This, this is the part I've been waiting for. The part where you outline the concrete differences between Jesus and religion. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry I got a little mad a second you ago. I didn't know dick, that there was going to be a part that you dedicated shit. to my questions. Uh, let's hear it. See, one's, one's the work of God, but one's a man-made invention. invention. See, one, one is the cure, but the other is the infection. infection. That's meaningless! That's just a declarative statement! Uh, you know, this, this could be Coke's new marketing, marketing scheme. scheme. That Coke could fuck come out with a marketing scheme that says, there's Coke, and then there's fucking soda. Soda sucks. Coke is awesome. And then people be like, isn't Coke a soda? Be like, nah, man. No, Coke's different than soda. Here's some reasons why. See, one is the cure, but the other is the infection. Coke is the cure. Soda is the infection. Move you because religion says do. Jesus says done. Soda says do. Coke says done. Religion says slave. Jesus says son. Soda says slave, Coke says son. Religion puts you in bondage, while Jesus sets you free. Soda puts you in shackles, Coke sets you free. Religion makes you blind, but Jesus makes you see. Soda makes you blind, Coke lets you see. You see how it all just seems like this fucking slick marketing campaign? I wonder if that could be because it is a slick marketing campaign. I don't blame you for not liking religion. We all hate religion. Everyone at my church where we go to worship Jesus hates religion. What we have is not religion. It's a personal relationship with Jesus. Well, isn't that fucking special? You suck my... You suck my... Because my salvation is freely mine, and forgiveness is my own. Not based, based on my merits, but Jesus', Jesus is obedience alone. That's right. Nothing that an individual person does matters. Nothing that you do in this world means anything. It's all about Jesus. Oh, you helped out at a soup kitchen? Big fucking deal. Do you believe in Jesus yet? That's what the real shit is. It's all about Jesus. Who gives a fuck? Oh, you helped people. You helped an old lady cross the street. Wow. What, well, you want a fucking medal? Come back when you got some Jesus. Because he took the crown of thorns and the blood dripped down his face. He took what we all deserved. I guess that's why you call it grace. He took what we all deserved? 
We all deserve to be beaten and nailed to some sticks. We all deserve to burn in hell for all eternity. Yes. We all deserve that. Who the fuck deserves this? I can't think of one person. I can't think of anybody. I can't think of Why a single fucking solitary fucking human being stuck. that I've ever met that I think deserves to be beaten and nailed to some fucking sticks. And even if I could think of someone who deserved that, I can't think of anyone, not even fucking Joseph Stalin or Adolf Hitler, who deserves to burn God, for all time. Maybe Hitler deserves to burn for like 50 years, but at some point you say, okay, mercy. God wants you to burn forever if you believe in hell. And apparently this does because it's saying that we're going to be saved from something. And what can you be saved from if not hell? And while being murdered, he yelled, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because when he was dangling on that cross, he was thinking of you. Yeah, he was thinking of you. You, specifically. You, the person watching this video. Jesus was beaten the fuck out of and nailed to some sticks. And as he sat there, bleeding and suffering and dying, he was thinking I about you, his. Josh. Or you, Kyle. Or you, Sarah. Man, he was thinking about you Goddamn fucking Jesus. specifically. How can you not have faith in that? How can you not believe that, folks? Jesus loves you. Is it really so much to ask that you just love him back a little bit? That you just say, yeah, I love Jesus too. He suffered for you, you fucking pricks. Be grateful. Be fucking grateful. So for religion, no, I hate it. In fact, I literally resent it. Oh, you literally resent it, as opposed to figuratively resenting it. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I, I remain unconvinced by the premise of this poem. The premise that you're talking about something that's not religion. Something that is uniquely different from religion. At the end there, you even say at one point, religion is man searching for God, but Christianity is God searching for man. Religion is man searching for God, Christianity is God searching for man. I think that's pretty fucking telling, because you start off saying, Jesus and religion are different things, but by the end of the poem, you're saying that Christianity and religion are different things. They're not. When you have a belief structure that says that you have sinned, you have done something wrong by virtue of your very existence, and the only way to redeem yourself is through a man who lived and died 2,000 years before you were fucking born. And you gotta go to church, and there's this book called the Bible, it's full of a lot of neat stuff. You gotta believe all that, and then you can go to heaven after your sin of being born is forgiven. If not, well, then I hope you'll like it hot, because it's gonna be pretty fucking hot <laughs> where you're going. And by the way, Another thing about your poem that just rubs me the wrong way is this notion that the Old Testament was full of all this meanness and nastiness, but the New Testament, that's when you got cuddly old Jesus. And Jesus isn't so much a religion as he is your pal. Like, you could sit there and play Xbox with Jesus, you know? I mean, sure, he'd always beat you because he's perfect in every way, but still, he would play with you because he's your buddy, he's your pal. And Matthew 10.34 kind of contradicts that a little bit. Jesus says in Matthew here, and remember, you believe in the Bible, Jefferson, so think not that I am come to send peace on earth. What's that? Jesus doesn't believe in peace on earth? I am not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he that taketh not his cross 
and followeth after me is not worthy of me. So this is a guy that literally says to us, love me more than you love your son or your daughter or your mother or your father. You know what I would say to a guy like that if he walked up to me on the street and told me that I had to love him more than my own family? I would tell him to go fuck himself. And you know what difference it makes that his name is Jesus and he supposedly died for my sins according to some 2,000 year old book of desert stories and according to priests and pastors and demagogues the world over. You know what difference that makes to me? None. I tell Jesus, go fuck yourself. I love my family thousands of times more than I could ever love you, even if I believed that you really did what these people and this book claims that you did. My name is the Amazing Atheist, and unlike Jesus, I really did come to abolish religion. I come not to bring a sword, but peace. I am the Amazing Atheist, and today I am going to feed a troll. This is where my intro would be if I had an intro. But I don't have an intro, at least not yet. So if you want to make me one, attach it as a response to this video, and I might just end up using it. Conventional internet wisdom states that one should refrain from feeding the trolls. And for the most part, this is a good policy, but I believe that every once in a while you have to feed a troll. You see, a troll is going to troll whether you feed it or not. Remember when you were a little kid and your parents told you just ignore the bully and he'll go away? Well, that's bullshit. When you ignore the bully, you just look like a submissive bitch and the bully's gonna try even harder to get a rise out of you. The best thing you can do is punch the bully square in his fucking face so he picks Amen. on someone weaker and more vulnerable. Amen. So without further ado, I bring you one of the stupidest trolls that I have ever dealt with in my long and illustrious career as a fat guy who rants in front of a video camera. You're not an atheist! No, you are not! An atheist is defined by someone who doesn't believe in God whatsoever. Hey, I don't believe in God whatsoever, so that means that I can define atheist. So I want to define atheist to mean someone with a giant penis. Oh! Oh, wow! It worked! Oh, well, that might be a little too big, but... Ow! Oh, God! Oh, okay. It's touching the floor now. This is... Oh! Ah! Oh! It's the size of a walrus! Ah! Oh, this is horrible! Ah! Doesn't talk about him or your preferences about God or what you think about God. Atheists have no opinion of God because you do not believe in a God. That's like saying the tooth fairy is a meth head when you... Bitch, suck my motherfucking dick, bitch. I, I deliberately, deliberately chose for the, the title, title of the book, book a, a passage, passage in the Bible, Bible which, which is, is about, about God's, God's inclusivity, inclusivity and love, and, and people turn, turn that upside down into meaning it has, has to do with, with it's exclusive. Let, Let me explain. explain. If, if you, you read, read that, that verse in context, in context with, with everything, everything around it, what, what Jesus, Jesus is telling his disciples, disciples is, number, number one, he and God, God are the same, same. And, and he, he says, says that three times. 
that, that God, God and I are, are one, one, we're, we're the, the same. same. In that, in that passage. passage. But, but he's, he's also telling his, his disciples, and, and I, I quote, quote from, from that passage, passage Love one, one another as, as I have loved, loved you. This, this is my commandment. Jesus boiled everything he came down to this world to teach us is to, to love, love one another the way he loved us. us. Now, now, Jesus, Jesus did, did he see his religion, religion which, which was Judaism, Judaism as, as an exclusive, exclusive love, love, which is what, what the Jewish, Jewish people practiced. Practice. The, the Jews, Jews were, were not allowed to speak to people, people who are not, not Jews. Jews. They were, they were not, not supposed, supposed to have anything, anything to do with them. If, if they, they did, they had to go to the temple and make a sacrifice because, because they committed a grave um, error against, against their, their faith. faith. Jesus, Jesus goes to outside, outside of the Jewish, of the Jewish territory, territory into a Phoenician area and runs, runs into a Syro Phoenician woman who begs him, him to heal her daughter, daughter which, which he does. And, and then, get, get the, this. this he, he turns, turns to his disciples, disciples and he said, said I wish, I wish, I mean, I mean I'm using all the words, he says, I wish you guys had the kind of faith he had. Uh, Jesus is approached by a uh, Roman centurion, which is a uh, leader of uh, part of the Roman army. army. Enemies, Enemies of the Jews, Jews. everybody hated the Romans, Romans in uh, Israel because they were an oppressive uh, Force, force and, and demanding all, all kinds, kinds of taxes, taxes from everyone. And this, this Roman centurion comes to Jesus and asks him to heal someone Jesus does. Um, these are two examples of, of Jesus um, not, not being exclusive. You know, you know he, he doesn't, doesn't say these people, are you Jews? Jews? Do you believe, believe in God? God? You know. No. Do you go to, 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 to Syria? He, he doesn't ask them, ask them any questions. questions. He, he just does it. And if you go further, um, he deals with people who have great problems that are not allowed within um, you know, 30 feet of a Jew, like a leper. A leper comes to Jesus, and Jesus not only heals him, but touches him. A woman, a woman with, with um, you know, you know a, uh, a flow of blood from her, her private area, which she suffered from for many, many years. She, she comes up and touches his robe. He heals her. I mean, by by that, that, that woman, woman with blood was, was like, like um, not, not at, at all, all welcomed, welcomed in, in any kind of decent society because she was you know, unclean. And, and she, she was ostracized. ostracized. I, mean, I mean, Jesus, if, if you read the Bible, you see Jesus reaching out to all, all kinds of people. Um, not pushing them away. Oh, you're not, you're not the, right the right kind. You don't belong to my you know, synagogue. You don't belong to my faith. You don't belong to you know, my tribe. Turning Christianity into tribalism, turning it into a country club, disgusts me. It really makes me angry. By the way, I say, I say those things in this book. Our love is for everyone. That's what Jesus taught. God damn it. Time, but I would have another time. 
I, I talked about the master book, it was too smart. Um, and I thought that materialism, which is kind of the basis of atheism, was the way to go. Everybody at the university that I was a, I was a college professor and everybody at the university was also an atheist. And the people that I associated with, which was, I think, the majority of people. And God damn it. Um, we just knew that that was true. And because we're educators, and I am terribly ashamed of this, but I do want to tell you that we used to openly mock Christians in the classroom when it had nothing to do with the curriculum. And we used to try and convince those naive, silly, superstitious children <laughs> that believed in Christianity that they were believing in fairy tales. And that's what we call Christianity, fairy tales, nonsense, you know, superstition. You know, if you want to be an educated person, you've got to let that stuff go and become a materialist. Now, the justification for materialism is, of course, science. And I love science. I am a science freak. I think science is great. I think when you study science, and I think many scientists would agree with this, that when you study science, it's a wonderful way to learn about God and to know God better. And I, and I have met scientists, I'm real bona fide real scientists, not quack scientists, who, who really think that studying science is a way of like uh, knowing God. Uh, but it can be used to justify a materialistic point of view. I believe that I am qualified to not have a near-death experience as anyone in this church. I was not an Adolf Hitler or a Joseph Stalin or a Genghis Khan or a Mao Zedong, okay? I was not, I mean, I wasn't responsible for the murder of tens of millions of people. Uh, I wasn't that caliber of evil. But you know that there's a saying that sin is sin, and I murdered people without ever ending their life with a bullet or, or a noose. You know, uh, the Bible says that if you if you do it in your heart, you've done it. That's in reference to adultery. And I murdered a lot of people in my heart. And God forgive me for all those kids, but I turned away from their little Baptist church and their little Catholic church and their little Methodist Church and their little Presbyterian Church and their little Disciples of Christ Church. I taught thousands of kids in my 20 years at the university. God forgive me for whatever harm I did. I hope that they didn't believe a word I said, but I may have influenced them. I certainly tried, and all of my friends tried. <laughs> so June 1st, 1985, when I had my near death experience, I never prayed, I never thought anything other than the fact that if this goes the way it's going, it's going to be lights out, end of story, curtains, the end. You know, what don't you understand about an electric switch? On, off. That's what I knew. I didn't speculate. I knew. I've, I've taken animals to the vet. Animals that I loved, right? And held them in my arms while they gave them an injection. <coughs> You've all done that, right? Probably everybody in here has done that. It's amazing how quick it is. And painless. It's like, it's creepy. You know, they're there, they're looking at you. Of course, they're, they're sick and ill because they're not feeling well, but they're like, they're looking at you, trusting you and believing in you. And they shave that little place on their forearm. And they say, and you finally, are you trying to get the tears out of your eyes and the words out of your throat? You say, go ahead and do it. They go, boom. And the dog just goes, boom. Bang. Right? What don't you get? It's on a switch. You're alive. <coughs> and to a materialist, it makes a lot of sense. After all, we're just an electrochemical, you know, organism. So, I'm not going to go into detail about my new death experience, but I wanted to talk about. Um, in a, in, a, in a bigger, more overall way, in the context of it all being love. 
So if I died, I was taken to hell. And I do try to say this because it's honest, but it's really, really hard for me emotionally to get this out. When I went to hell, I never felt out of place or wrongly convicted or like, they can't do that to me. The people that were there, by the way, just a little aside, you know what makes hell, hell? Because God doesn't put people in hell. People go to hell because they don't want to go, they don't like God, they don't want to be with God, they hate love. I mean, the Bible says God judges by the heart, not by appearances. We judge by appearances. God doesn't stand there and go, ah, you know, you didn't put enough money in the church play, or you didn't, you know, you weren't good enough to your mother-in-law, whatever. God, it's not, I mean, God knows everything you did. If God, without Jesus Christ, if God's justice would all go to hell. When we reject God, when we reject Christ, when we, when we reject all the ways that God invites us to heaven, and I'm including Christians who say they're Christians, but they don't live a loving life, a compassionate life, a charitable life, or if you want to describe that. You know what the word charity in the Bible actually means? Um, the action of love, the activity of love, right? Charity doesn't God lie. damn it. So love. Anyways. When God damn it. people die, they get God's perfect justice. God and if they, if they love God with all their mind, soul, and strength and love their neighbor as their self, they're really good candidates for heaven. And if they have rejected all that, they aren't. And then, you know, people always ask me questions. It's like, well, what about atheists that are really good people? And it's like, uh, tell me about how good they are. I was an atheist. All my friends were atheists. We thought we were, we didn't think we were good people. We thought we were superlative good people. We thought we were far better than those great unwashed masses of those ever Come on you slut You suck my dick, bitch. Suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. Suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. You s you suck my dick, bitch. 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 Suck my dick. You 
You suck my dick, bitch. That fucking poem. You suck my dick, bitch. You suck my goddamn motherfucking goddamn dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. Now fuck up with me right here. I'll King, I'll King Sullivan the fuck out of you. I'll King, I'll King, I'll King Sullivan the cunt out of you, cunt. Goddamn slut. I was prepared to King Sullivan the fuck out of you into the goddamn stomach. You goddamn son of a goddamn bitch. God fucking damn it. God damn it. God damn it. No, fuck that shit. Suck my dick, bitch. Let me move goddamn motherfucking castle like a goddamn motherfucker. Goddamn. Suck my dick, bitch. Suck my dick, bitch. But then again, those movies always have a who's he? Who's he? God damn it. God fucking damn it. No. Suck my dick, bitch. God damn it. But then again, those movies always have her who's e with spits, pit, who's he? God fucking damn it. God damn it. God fucking damn it. Damn it. God damn it. God fucking damn it. See that fucking pisses me off. God fucking damn it.
God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. God fucking damn it. God damn it. God fucking damn it. Go fuck it. Suck my motherfucking slut. God damn it. <coughs> God fucking damn it. But then again, those movies always have a who's he? We're super mature. Yeah. 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 We should definitely not have sex right now. We should definitely not have sex right now. It would complicate the situation. It's the adult thing to not have sex right now We have the common sense not to have sex right now I need time to reflect And I'm in a real weird place God damn it It feels so good to be having sex right now it's So good to be having sex right now What makes it so good is we just said We shouldn't be having sex right now But now we can't stop having sex right now I mean, it would be weirder Stop having sex Such a good point We might as well just finish We should definitely not have sex again We should definitely not have sex again What are we, the nobos in a tree? There's no reason to have 
have sex again But I'll be ready to go again in ten Okay, what if we say this is the last sex night? It's like in movies when robbers do one last heist This tonight will be our last sex heist But then again, those movies always get a sequel We're super mature. Yeah. 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 We should definitely not have sex right now. We should definitely not have sex right now. It would complicate the situation. It's the adult thing to not have sex right now We have the common sense not to have sex right now I need time to reflect And I'm in a really weird place It feels so good to be having sex right now So good to be having sex right now What makes it so good is we just said We shouldn't be having sex right now But now we can't stop having sex right now I mean, it would be weird such a good point, we might as well just finish. You stupid bitch. Stupid fucker. We should definitely not have sex again. We should definitely not have sex again. What are we, bonobos in a tree? There's no reason to have sex again, but I'll be ready to go again in ten. Okay, what if we say this is the last sex night? It's like in movies when robbers do one last heist. But this tonight will be our last sex heist. But then again, those movies <coughs> always get a But then again, sequel. those movies always have a boozy. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You suck my dick, bitch. You We're super mature. You suck. Yeah. My, you yeah. suck. Yeah. My dick yeah. 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 We should definitely not have sex right now. We should definitely not have sex right now. It would complicate the situation. It's the adult thing to not have sex right now. We have the common you sense suck to my have sex dick, right bitch. now. I need time to reflect. And I'm in a really weird place. It feels so good to be having sex right now. So good to be having sex right now. What makes it so good is we just said we shouldn't be having sex right now. But now we can't stop having sex right now. I mean, it would be weird to Stop having sex Such a good point We might as well just finish God We should definitely it. not have sex again We should definitely not have sex again What are we, bonobos in a tree? There's no reason to have sex again, but I'll be ready to go again in ten. Okay, what if we say this is the last sex night? It's like in movies when robbers do one last heist. This tonight will be our last sex heist. But then again, those movies always get a sequel. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. Weirder to stop having sex Such a good point We might as well just finish We should definitely not have sex again We should definitely not have sex again What are we, bonobos in a tree? There's no reason to have sex again But I'll be ready to go again in ten Okay, what if we say this is the last sex night? It's like God, damn it. robbers do one last heist This tonight will be our it. last sex heist But then again, those movies always get a sequel 
God fucking damn it. But then again, those movies always get a hoozy. But then again.